Tracy continues to go with Ron Sexton. Evidently, he heard some of the comments that uh, had been made from Sexton about Smothers being a, a paper champion. Now they're trying to pull him apart and get him back. Big Lou and Jerry Bryant pulling Sexton off and Tracy Smothers being held by Paul Diamond and J.T. Southern. What a whale of an opening piece of action on this championship wrestling program. Quite a match. It went to five minutes. GWH-TV, bringing you classic wrestling action sanctioned by the Georgia Wrestling History Network. Hi there, folks, and welcome to another edition of GWH-TV on the Georgia Wrestling History Network. Br Brother Stevie. Mm. What is wrong with you? I just caught a piece of fist, Joe. Stevie, that was a piece of footage of a fist. Oh. I am Brother Joe, along with me, Brother John, and along with us, the, re the recovering from that piece of footage of a fist, uh, Stevie J. I guess I'm okay. And as you remember, last Monday, as we entered your homes and smartphones, it was Casual Monday... But as you can see today, it is Mullet Monday. I, I like that tie. Well, Brother Joe, as far as mullet, well. That's all I know! That's all I know for crying out loud! That's all I know for like 25, 30 years is mullet's all I know! It's Robert. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and go to the first match. Now, this actually is a match with Tracy Smothers. Paul Diamond, and J.T. Southern, not to be confused with uh, frequent Eagles and Linda Ronstadt collaborating J.D. Souther. This is J.T. Southern. And not to be confused with the manager from the uh, Diamond Stud. That's exactly right. And they're going to be taking on Memphis Vice, which you look like you might could be a part of in that. that well, it's Miami Vice. Is that part of the Alex Lifeson line? Sometimes. Oh, that's good. And they're going to be uh, teaming up with Ron Sexton. Because I wonder if he's related to Charlie Sexton. Haven't given that much thought. No, me either. Let's go to the ring. He says ring the bell, and here we go. Did he? Yeah. Big now he Lou. says ring the bell. He's going to be starting <laughs> off. Big Lou against Paul Diamond, it looks like, David. Yes, indeed. Big Lou Winston. Boy, he's a big one. He is uh, tall. Has always been impressive as far as his size. Had an attitude problem now and then. Look out, Jerry Bryant jumped in there. Paul Diamond leaps over and drops it to Big Lou. And there's one for good measure for Jerry Bryant. So the Memphis Vice not having a very good beginning to this match here today. Paul Diamond taking the measure of both of them. Conference time down in the corner of the Memphis Vice and Ron Sexton. And stepping back through the ropes. There is Big Lou Winston. Diamond. All right, come on. Uh, Winston made the tag on Jerry Bryant. Paul Diamond turns and makes the tag, and here's J.T. Southern. Southern gets a very warm reception. Uh, the audience here, he stepped through the ropes, upset Brian a little bit. It took a moment to yell at him. Brian, into the middle of the ring, side headlock on J.P. Southern. Southern lets him back into the rope, fires him off into the rope. Brian caught him with his shoulder. This time, J.P. rolls him down to the mat, grabs him by the arm again. Winston came in to help out, Sexton in to help out. And J.T. Southern has taken care of all three of them. Yeah, they're all down yelling at the referee. I can just imagine they're saying, hey, he's pulling hair, he's pulling tight. There's no way any other way he could have gotten us off our feet. But it doesn't make any difference. Sexton counted back out of the ring. He's not the legal man in there. legal man in there is Jerry Bryant. He has to step back through the rope. Bryant again. Well, it's not going to be Southern. JT has made a tag, and Tracy Smothers 
Jerry Bryant tags Lou Winston. So it's Tracy Smothers against Big Lou. Tracy, winner in a tournament of the Mid-America Championship. He has hung on to that belt. Still has it. Tracy, round behind Lou Winston. Good move. Rolls him to the ropes. Oh, but Big Lou held on. Held on, and he's happy with himself. Tracy drop kicks him right through the ropes and down onto the floor. And now Big Lou is not smiling. Big Lou with a worried look on his face. And again, he and Bryant both yelling at uh, the referee. These are the two best complainers. If they ever have a college course for complaining, Bryant and Big Lou will be the perfect professors. on the rope, Tracy Smothers. Big Lou hit him with a right hand. Tracy! Tracy let him have it with a right hand. Now there's a move you would not have seen from Tracy Smothers a year ago. But he has learned if somebody hammers you with a fist, one way to combat that happening again is to pop him right back. And that's what he did to Winston. Paul Diamond. Big Lou raked his fingers across Paul's eyes. That broke the hole. Winston has made the tag, and I think this is the first official look in the match at Ron Sexton. Sexy Ron Sexton out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Paul Diamond over to the corner gets the tag, and here's Tracy. Tracy smothers over the top rope, goes after Sexton. And Winston, since he's there, Bryant jumps down off the ring apron so he won't get hit. Tracy smothers really showing that he can be an aggressive wrestler. Mid-America champion Tracy uh, in there right now with a guy who is one of several guys who say, hey, I can beat that Tracy Smothers. I want a title shot. Sexton has been hollering at saying I can beat him, and uh, he's in there having a chance to trade licks with him, and look at Tracy go. Boy, you made a good point a little bit ago. This Smothers has really gotten aggressive. That's the day. He has the beat. Hey, we got them all in there now. Six-man match and six-man in action. Bryant against Diamond. Winston against Brother. Tracy Smothers against Sexton. Sexton is out of the ring. Down on the floor. Tracy coming off the rope. Whoa, and he let him have it with a right hand. Down here on the floor. Referee trying to get them uh, to stop and get back up in the ring. He's counting here on the apron. Tracy's heard some of those. He counted them out. He counted out Tracy Smothers and uh, double count out. There are the two legal men in the ring. The action still goes on as Paul Diamond just fired at Jerry Bryant and JT in there with Big Lou. But Tracy continues to go with Ron Sexton. Evidently, he heard some of the comments that uh, had been made from Sexton about Smothers being a, a paper champion. Now they're trying to pull him apart and get him back. Big Lou and Jerry Bryant pulling Sexton off and Tracy Smothers being held by Paul Diamond and J.T. Southern. What a whale of an opening piece of action on this championship wrestling program. Quite a match. It went to five minutes, 16 seconds before they were both counted out. Now they're going at it again down here. Sexton and Smothers. I think you're right. I think Tracy was mighty upset with Sexton with some of the comments that had been made. And he was out to prove today that he could, in fact, beat him in the ring or on the floor or wherever. Double count out, and that's all there is to that great six-man opener. We've got more of it. Be back in just a moment. Well, folks, what a match that was. You know, this next match actually comes to us from 1996 at an independent show in North Carolina. Now, most recently, we have seen these, uh, or at least one half of the participants in this tag team match in action in their backyard. Tell, tell us, Brother John, tell the folks at home. Well, for those of you who follow TNA, you're familiar with another brother of another totally different mother, Brother Nero, oh, yes. also known as Obsolete, formerly known as the artist, formerly known as Jeff Hardy, who, by the way, happy birthday, Jeff this week so and of course broken matt matt hardy 
And of course, neither of these are to be confused with Parker Stevenson or Sean Casty of the TV show, The Hardy Boys. What are you? Do you have something to share with us, Stevie J? No, it's just the Hardy Boys. You know, like Hardly Boys, like on South Park. I got a clue going this way. All right, folks, we're going to go ahead to the ring as the Hardys take on the Andersons. Yeah. To the ring. All right. We're taking it all the way back to 1996 at an independent show in North Carolina. And for you fans out there, if you know anything about the three of us, we love independent shows in North Carolina. That's exactly right. And uh, that's actually Jeff Hardy there in the neon green. Oh, the dude kind of looks like the Joker. All right. I think it's pretty safe to say, though, that Jeff Hardy will not be sneaking up on anyone in that outfit. Oh, no. Now, interestingly enough, and the Hardys are taking on the Andersons. Now, this is no relation to Ole and Arn. She'd be hard-pressed to tell the difference. Ooh, up, he went up and over. Oh. He'd be hard-pressed to barely get over the top row. Yeah. Well, that, that's a so whole it's other like a, It's like a story. family feud we got going on then. Uh, the, somewhat. The Hardys versus the Andersons. Oh, oh, good God. He came down like a freaking rock on him. Now, for those of you watching this match that are wondering if possibly Jeff is going to take it high, (laughs) they're in like a VFW or something like that. There is no no high here. There's probably not even air conditioning. Uh, We know a little bit uh, about going to indie shows with no air conditioning. (laughs) Yeah, especially just short of North Carolina. Uh, we won't name any specific places, but uh, Lancaster. Yeah, look at this. Man, I bet it was electric in the auditorium that night, brothers. In this auditorium? Oh, this is the match we're watching. Well, I, I, uh, looking around, I'm trying to figure out if anybody's here. Um, Oh, look, it's a little dance party here in the ring. You said this was the 90s, right, not the 70s? <laughs> that's, that is correct, Brother Stevie. All, although you'd be hard-pressed to tell with those, uh, those. Uh, I think he was doing the hustle. Yeah, there was like some funky fresh moves going on there. Van, Van McCoy would be proud. Uh, oh, now look. We, get, we got us a, a dance-off. Yeah, what is this? Saturday night on. Saturday night fever or Saturday night's main event? The only thing I'm missing from this is the Disco Inferno. The one and only Glenn Gilberti, one of the favorites of uh, our friend Michael Garrett. That's right. You know, um, a great opening match from this would have been Disco versus Alex Wright. Dance off. You got that right. <laughs> Woo! It's, uh, nice. it's like watching the wrestling version of the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, well, I will say something watching these two. Uh, these two teams going against oh, each no. other. This is also, this is very reminiscent if you if you really pay attention. So far, this match is almost like they're paying tribute to uh, to the Minnesota Wrecking Crew taking on the Rock and Roll Express. How many elbows can he take? I was actually thinking that Matt Hardy looks a little bit like NWO Sting right here. Yeah, he kind of does a little bit. I actually know who that guy is. And that's a, oh, that's an Alabama jam. Bobby Eaton. I wonder if Bobby Eaton taught him that move. Oh, that's possible. Uh, tag in to Jeff. And uh, Jeff Hardy, if you've noticed, uh, his, his facial gear looks sort of like that, oh. that mask that uh, Brutus Beefcake was wearing after his uh, parasailing accident back in the uh, early 90s. That was some, some fantastic teamwork there. Whoa! Uh, I haven't seen that many flips since I went to the <laughs> Russian circus. That there one must have hurt. You know, I have a feeling we're going to see more flips in this match then you will see suplexes in Suplex City. Or more flips than you'd see on an, on an emo kid trying to get his hair out of his face. It's an emo kid. I, I don't know, but all I know is, okay, is no kicking people in the face. That is the uh, that is a, a general tenet of life I have always tried to live by, Brother John. Yeah. Now, is it my imagination, or does the side of his trunk say wolf? 
I was just noticing that. Yeah, I was trying to figure out, because the, the W kind of looks like a B. Whoop. Like on its side. Whoop. Bulb. Whoop. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> that's, a, that's some fancy uh, balance work there on the feet. Look out for a minute there. That, that kind of looked like the crying wrestling thing jumping up into the terminal. <laughs> oh, we have a suplex. Does that mean we're going to Suplex City? What state is that in? Apparently North Carolina. Yes. Oh. Look at the teamwork on the part of the Hardys there. Ooh. That's straight out of the Midnight Rockers right there. I would have to agree with you, Brother John. Whoa! Face rope. That didn't seem like it would have felt very good. Now one thing I personally am digging about this match for, for a 90s match, this has a very old school kind of feel to it. Yeah. Uh, maybe because it's like inside like a VFW with like only 50 people. But I'm thinking it's because <laughs> we're not seeing ladders and tables yet. And barbed wire. <laughs> Just like hanging there like a little monkey. He's like, get off of there! And do you know, interestingly enough, C.W. Anderson would actually go on to wrestle in ECW after this. Really? Yes, in fact he would. Whoa! Oh, all right. It's kind of like that uh, thing AJ Styles does, but in reverse. Exactly. Dude needs to be on the Olympic diving team. Where did we find this guy, Brother John? I don't know, but you know, <laughs> if, he, if he keeps doing moves like that, then it, that would explain why he's broken. You know what I just noticed about the um, the bottom of Jeff Hardy's trunks? They look like the bands that go around the Ultimate Warrior's arms. <laughs> Yeah. His biceps. Maybe he's paying homage. Whoa. That's some that's some pretty uh, fancy teamwork there too. Are we gonna have another dance off? It's it's possible. <laughs> now you know the only thing that's really 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 missing Whoa! from this is their buddy that went on to WWE with him. And who would that be, Brother John? Uh, there was like, what, six of them? Childhood friends? Hmm. What, the Goonies? Yeah. It's our time down here. Get him! Get you him. know, what's kind of kind of interesting is is with the, whatever that is on his face. Whoa! He kind of looks like he's he's doing the ultimate warrior thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's like somewhere between the Ultimate Warrior and Steam. He'd have had to lift a little bit more weights. But he, he does. He's he's totally got that Ultimate Warrior vibe going on yeah. right now. He's a tall fella. He's towering over. Yeah, you know, yeah, my question is, is this is Hardy, the Hardys, right? Uh, last I checked. The world-renowned Hardys, and they're taking on, like, these two, like, no-name guys, right? Well, they, they have names. as so, Anderson. Yeah, but they're really nobody. So the question is, is it's obvious who the better team is and who's going to win this match. So why are we even including this this week? No, it's, it's, it's not over till it's over. Yeah. My question is, is on the West Coast, are they called the Carl's Juniors? You know what? I, I Seriously, I know I just asked this five seconds ago, but where did we find this guy? Through all kinds of abuse there. That actually was pretty funny. <laughs> so, one thing that we can throw in because you guys, Whoa! Know, you guys know as as, as we're <laughs> shades on, of man. shades of ravishing rude <laughs> right there, huh? As you guys know as we're commentating this, that this that our commentating is not from 1996. This is actually like post match by ten years. Uh, yeah. uh, we can we 20. can let you guys know that this week in history is actually. Brother Nero's birthday. Oh, oh yeah. I wonder if they'll be having a, a backyard barbecue to celebrate that. It's possible. Along with a little uh, backyard wrestling. Well, you know, they do have that big monolith thing that they set on fire during their match. They could actually, like, set that thing on fire and get some marshmallows and some graham crackers and some mm -hmm. chocolate. And, uh, you might be able to do a good idea there, Brother there John. There you go. Out oh, at the Hardy oh, compound. Oh. Or as... Steve would say the on the West Coast the, the Carl's Jr. compound. I can't believe I'm entertaining this. <laughs> so 
You know, I just noticed a moment ago, Brother John, that there were some uh, basketball goals. Looks like they were kind of folded up. So. Oh yeah, we're definitely in a gym. Well, but it kind of has like a kind of has that VFW vibe too. Yeah, that's possible. But you know, some of the best wrestling back in the day happened at the uh, National Guard armories and the VFWs and uh, in the the uh, high school gym. You know. Oh yeah. And still does. And still does. I mean, we've seen quite a few. One of the greatest ones we ever saw was actually in Charlotte, North Carolina, if you remember correctly. Uh, we stood in line at a high school after going to, what, a Zesty or a Zesto or whatever the ice cream place is. Uh, the Tasty Freeze. Tasty Freeze. We did not see Jack and Diane there. No. no. And, uh, <laughs> and we stood in line, and we went into this gymnasium, and actually in line we got to hang out with... Uh, uh, Ricky Steamboat's mom. That's right. The grandmother of Ricky Steamboat Jr. She was there to see her grandbaby wrestle. And he Ooh. amazing wrestler in this time. <laughs> and uh, on the card that night was Ric Flair in the corner of two of his sons. Reed and David. That's right. With the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, in the corner of the Nasty Boys with special guest referee... Sterling Golden. Sterling Golden. Oh, from last time. That's right. And some of you at home might know him as Thunderlips, the ultimate male from Rocky Three. That's right. And that was an incredible event. Um, and, of course, as will happen with the best events in North Carolina, uh, George South oh, yes. was on the card. Um, Mr. Number One. We always love seeing George South. Still an amazing Whoa! Performer. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow. Um, you won't see oh. George South do that. <laughs> I want to say Rock and Roll Express. That's right. We're versus the that. Midnight Express. Yes. It's uh, Stan and Bobby. So, um, Stan Lane and Bobby Eaton. A great night. Um, we were kept from buying hot dogs because we we're behind in line of Sterling Golden who bought the last few hot dogs. That's a shame. No, he probably needed them though. Yeah. So, yeah. Gotta, gotta get you energized. Oh. Um, um, he kind of missed with that. Yeah, um, a little bit. Yeah. Scott Steiner would not be so, proud. No, that was a hurt. <laughs> Regretting that one. I'm trying look to look more like a Frankenstoner. <laughs> you know, I think that's what they need in this match. They need a little George South. I tell you what, I don't think an, I don't think an indie wrestling event has ever suffered due to the presence of George South. No, I, in my opinion, I think if I think any event in North Carolina could stand to have a little George South. Oh my God! I think actually that should be a state law that if you are. Oh. Oh, here. Oh, that, that was the Is end that of it. I guess, maybe. Yes, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I guess so. I'm going to go ahead and assume due to the crowd, at least half of them on their feet. Cheering. No, wait a minute. You're going to tell me that the, the no name guys, like, beat the Hardys? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Go Andersons. Just another, another win for the Andersons. He's just like, uh, although this is not. Here, you... oh. Oh, 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 it's like we're having a. We're not done yet. Well, I think Jeff's not happy about the use of the chair. I mean, when you have a room full of, wait a minute, are we overturning? No. When you have a room full of chairs and a wrestling event, I mean, you're only op- opening up opportunity. I do believe that the match is being overturned. Oh, okay. Maybe thrown out, and the Hardys are the winners. And now everyone can go home feeling like they got their money's worth. Oh, Ooh. here's your chair. Oh, wow. well, apparently not very gracious winners at this point. Man, the last time I saw an Anderson get like ambushed like that, only got kicked out of the Four Horsemen. <laughs> yeah, that's that's something it's we over, guys. that's something we probably never need to bring back up with Oli again if no. we meet him. <laughs> Man, that that's that's some impressive uh, athleticism there, brother John. I mean, how many falls? All right, there? there we go. Well, it looks like they continue we the have, match, and we that's have officially the officially counted. I'm thinking that this might be a best three out of five. It's possible. Bye, Anderson. Bye. Na 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 na. Hey hey hey. You suck. Man, these Andersons look slap worn out. Get that camera out of my face! Definitely be what he's saying. If his lips are good. Now the question is, <laughs> is, is, uh, 
is as they scan through the audience, how many grannies are at this event? Well, it's it's like George South. There just can never be enough. No. Wow. What a fantastic match that was between the Hardys and the Andersons. I tell you what, in the last 20 years, the Hardys sure have come a long way, Brother John. You're right. They started off in the backyard. They've gone everywhere, and they found their way back to the backyard. Uh, believe in the business, uh, we refer to that as uh, coming full circle. Full circle. This next match is also from the indie circuit. 2010. No, wait, wait a minute. Did you say 2010? I did. Last episode, we were like all excited and glorifying the 80s and the 70s, and now all of a sudden, we're in the 90s and the millennium. Yeah, it's like people had Xboxes then. That's like new. Okay. And I think a lot of you at home, most of you at home, are going to recognize one of the participants in this match. As he can be seen most every Monday night playing trombone as part of the New Day. The New Day. And we are talking about none other than Xavier Woods, who back in 2010, leaving TNA and coming to the WWE, went by the name Austin Creed. Oh, that, that dude plays video games on YouTube. He most certainly does. Oh, man. I was not aware of that. It's cool. It's really cool. Let's take it to the ring. Ryan Chaos versus Austin Creed. Guys, we are taking it all the way back to 2010. Oh, so long ago. Raise oh, the man. roof. Raise the roof. It's pretty high up there. Guys, I'm looking at the aesthetics of this this venue here, and I can't exactly figure out what they're in. It's, it's obvious, Joe. They're in like an underground speakeasy or something. A speakeasy? Yeah, you know, because they, they can't drink. Is there in the room? My vote is Mountain Lodge. It actually kind of looks like a barn. Barn. Barn's good. And, and you know, as Jim Ross, as Jim Ross would say, this is likely to be a real barn burner. Barn burner. Mm-hmm. And, and I guess that's good if it gets too hot. There's a box fan hanging on the wall up there. There we go. Fighting like animals. <laughs> now it's hard to believe there was ever a time. When Xavier Woods came to the ring without a trombone. But here we are. There was a time when he had to work a little harder to toot his horn. And Brother John, exactly where in his career was Xavier Woods at this point? Well, 2010, I believe that would be somewhere between TNA. Consequences Creed. Exactly. And the WWE. The artist currently known as, famously known as, Xavier Woods, part of New Day Rock. And if I'm not mistaken, the New Day actually just hit their 365th day as uh, WWE Tag Champions. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so that's a whole year. New Year Rocks. Stevie, please. Now, interestingly enough, um, Ryan Chaos actually hails from, believe it or not, Osaka, Japan. Hmm. That's interesting. Do you think maybe he was kind of abandoned there as a baby and raised and trained by um, Mr. Miyagi or something? Yeah, you know, that actually would be Okinawa. Okay. So maybe we should refer to him as Ryan son. Oh, yes. Ryan Sun. I would venture to say 
more not Osaka, Japan. I would say more like on the other side of the Dixie Belt. Oregon. Oregon, yes. And you know, while we can while we say Oregon, we can also kind of throw in a little shout out here. Speaking of Southern Wrestling. Come on, Joe, let's have a little bit of trivia. Alrighty. Wrestler back in the late seventies, early eighties from Oregon. That would be none other than Billy Jack Haynes. Billy Jack Haynes. Or exactly. or as or as the legendary Bobby Heenan would say, Billy Jerk Haynes. It wasn't very nice of him, was it? Nope, nope. And I'd be willing to bet that Billy Jack would tear this ring up. That's right. The master of the full Nelson. Mm. The heck of a jump there. Now, another great thing about having this particular match on this particular show. In this particular barn. That's right. Is that Austin Creed here, mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes, is a homeboy. Right here in the great state of Georgia. What part of Georgia? I want to say is Marietta, maybe. Okay. And what is really cool is the WWE is kind of loaded with Georgia talent. They have the uh, the Cruz guy who is from Stone Mountain, Georgia. That's right, Apollo Cruz. Right. AJ Styles. AJ Styles. AJ Styles. And then we have people from the Carolinas uh, that take part in NXT as well as mm -hmm. WWE, uh, as in John Schuyler. That's right. So, um, John Schuyler, who actually just wrestled, I believe, uh, Russell Force in Aiken, South Carolina, right up the road just this last weekend or two ago. I tell you, Georgia and the Carolinas have always been stacked with some of the best talent in the world of professional wrestling. Exactly. What it seems like. And now, as they get really, really close to the uh, the guardrail, um, dental floss. I, I was gonna, I was gonna say twine, but it's possible. It and what's well, still sort of a barricade? Okay, well, it's one thing, one a thing I'm not digging about this is I'm looking around the ring in the front row and I'm seeing women, but I'm not seeing grannies. Oh, you're right. We, you know, maybe this is about the time that grannies were being phased out of indie wrestling. Oh, uh, you can't phase grannies out of wrestling. Uh, John, that's actually a nice way of, well... Saying that they uh, uh, are, uh, have moved on to a better plane of existence. The new new day in the sky? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Where's, Osaka's where, gonna need a damn arm, arm transplant after this. <laughs> I tell you, this is actually a great technical match. Xavier Woods is just an outstanding technical wrestler. All I can say is it's too bad that Big E and Kofi aren't outside the ring to pep the crowd up a little bit. <laughs> true, true. But they can definitely do that. They have definitely uh, come a long way since teaming up in the WWE. Don't take uh, his Kofi arm for off. years has always known as. Uh, uh, with the, the big Royal Rumble guy. That's that right. always had the, the great moves. Uh, you couldn't get rid of him. Always landed on his hands. Always and on his finding hands. creative ways to avoid being eliminated. That's right. Big E is... Um, hmm. he, you know, he always used to remind me of Carlton from The Fresh Prince. <laughs> yeah. But, like, if Carlton, like, was... Like, Buff. lifted weights. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of weights. Oh! Kind of like a standing sunset flip. No. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> now, you know, I, I, I know there's always a lot of discussions, a lot of time of uh, the, the product and where the product is going in WWE, TNA, and stuff like that. But I, I think it's kind of hard to argue against the fact that one of the things keeping wrestling alive is the New Day. You cannot argue with that. They are actually some of the most exciting guys in professional wrestling right yeah. now, if not the absolute funniest. Yes. You got a lot, a lot of good energy going on between the three of them. Exactly. Guys, just uh, an aside here. That referee, is that Artemis Pyle, the former drummer from Leonard Skinner? <laughs> I'm not sure. 
Because there's an uncanny, remarkable resemblance. You about killed the guy there. There's been a lot of uh, near pinfalls in this match, Brother John. Two! Have you noticed that? Two! Th there's been a lot of Two. near... There's been a lot of pinfalls. And I think that's why the referee has to wear gloves. He's wearing gloves? He is wearing gloves. Oh. Because he keeps having to s uh, slap the mat. How much more abuse is that, can that man's arm take? Like, that's been the, like most of this match. Is. I'm going to try to oh, rip the freaking arm off. But he just turned it around. That's a foul. Hopefully he's got a uh, good doctor back in Osaka. There's an Okinawa. Now. <laughs> now, earlier in the show, uh, we, uh, uh, Brother CV over here alluded to the, uh, the fact that Austin is a huge, huge video game fan. Huge. Oh, yeah. Huge. Huge. Uh, he has been doing his own show. What is it? Up, up, down, down. I believe it's called or something yeah, like that. Yeah. Since way back in the day, and I was noticing on the WWE Network, which you can subscribe to. You guys know all about that. Yeah, free um, advertising. They actually have. And how much is it a that month? That show, <laughs> it's like I, ten I bucks. Know, I don't ten, know. fifteen bucks a month. <laughs> um, no. But they actually have episodes. Of his YouTube video program dedicated to gaming and videos, where he actually goes, or he actually posts him under the name Austin Creed. And you know the uh, the name. You say it's up, 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 down, down. That is actually a uh, a nod to the old uh, Thirty Lives code yeah, the for Konami the code. Contra from the original You're Nintendo. Right, that's crazy. I, yeah. That's the only way I was ever able to beat Contra back in middle school when I used... It, well, not when you have 30 lives. Well, yeah. I don't know, even then, it's still not a cakewalk. Hey, you have the regular two or three lives, you can forget about it. <laughs> well, I always liked the music on that video game. I'm a big fan of the Contra band. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Here we have a leg scissors. Of some sort. Now you almost feel like this is like one of those like underground kumite kind of things. So we've gone from being in a barn to and to the kumite. Well, look at it. Doesn't it kind of look like something that's like, shh, don't tell anybody that this match is going on. It's illegal. Hey, I uh, listen. If I see somebody break out the salt and throw it in somebody else's eyes. I'll buy it. Or, like or it could be like Fight Club. I feel like I should be seeing somebody like way in the back there, like folding some laundry, like doing some laundry. Hey, wait a minute. Machine. See, you don't, you don't know the, that they're not. They're in the back. There's our buddy from a few weeks ago that kept getting in our way during the championship match. Oh, yeah. Standing up there. Standing up. Always in the way. Hey, down in the back. Uh, that would actually. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's... He's probably blocking the concession stand's view. <laughs> you people are going to sit down to watch this match. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, we need we need, need some pep here. Now, one thing with it, another thing that we know about this time period is uh, he spent the better part of the middle of this year before transitioning to the WWE uh, wrestling in the Southeast. So there's a good chance this is Georgia or the Carolinas, Tennessee or Florida. Well, we do have our fair share of barns down here. Yes. Barn! Now, we might have some kumites too, but uh, it's kind of a kind of an underground thing, I, I, would, I would suppose. Now, just to help out some, uh, some of those who, who may love the old Southern wrestling but may have never been to the South, let's enlighten them, okay? okay. Now... Let's say they're watching this match, right? Right. And let's say that they're wondering what what happens post match, right? Right. Okay. So the event is over. It's ten o'clock at night. It's time to leave. In the south, where do wrestling fans go after the wrestling match? 
the rest of the they world They go to the Waffle House. The Waffle House. Oh, and yeah. explain to those not in the know, those north of Toledo, Ohio, and to the west, what a Waffle House is if they have not seen that Anthony Bourdain version where he goes to South Carolina. Well, a, a Waffle House is uh, one of those uniquely southern uh, establishments that they, they seem to be frequented more in the evenings, I would suppose. Yeah, that's where the, 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 the people flock to after they've been hanging out at the bar and it's been closing time. Nothing. They're actually about to build a new Waffle House right you know, around the corner from where I live. Guys, I actually saw... And it's funny because I take that road almost every day over by your house, and it's just like a Waffle House just appeared out of nowhere. Yeah. It's oh! A- oh! Good lord. It- I know someone who's not going to the Waffle House. No, no, no. <laughs> but it's like, it's like, uh, it's like no oh, one yeah, actually. He's like practically dead. <laughs> they call that move scattered, smothered, and covered. <laughs> well, not the covered, but. <laughs> But you know what's funny, though? I, it's like you never see a Waffle House being built. They just kind of manifest out of thin yeah, air. Yeah, yeah, I've never seen one in the process. But like, I mean, They come out of like a Waffle House portal somewhere. They just, see, you know, I, I, I work like right up that road, so I come by and I see that it's like, oh, that building. So you is, saw the whole development oh, yeah. of the Waffle House. I was like, what's that going to be? Oh, that's going to be a Waffle House. Because it just, you, you know. You it's know. It's like looking at a Pizza Hut. It's like you know. And if you've ever been inside of a Waffle House... And I don't know if they have them so much anymore, but you still could go to the jukebox. And there was a wonderful selection of country songs by artists specifically about the Waffle House. My favorite was actually called Special Lady Waiting for Me at the Waffle House. I wonder if there's a special lady waiting for these gentlemen at the Waffle House. Probably Uh, not, the the, the ones they're uh, expecting. Hey, well, only the winner gets a free meal, guys. (laughs) To, To further... Oh, that so was we're fighting quite a... for free hash browns. <laughs> That's right. That could be. Um... Oh, not yet. Oh, two. And, and to further oh. expound for those of you who are still not 100 percent sure, the Waffle House is very much like the IHOP, where it's open 24 hours. Yes. It's about 30 degrees inside there with the air conditioning on. Yep. Even in the winter time. Even yep. in the winter time. And generally, the waitresses are over the age of 50. Yep. A lot of them missing some tea. And... The tea is usually very, very good. Mm-hmm. But the difference between a Waffle House and IHOP is people go to the IHOP late at night to eat. People go to the Waffle House late at night to congregate, to kind oh. of get rid of your hangover before you drive home. And that's the point where... If you're on a date and it's not working out, you go to the bathroom and you slip out the door. Yep. I don't know about you, Brother Stevie, but Brother John seems like he's had a lot of uh, history in the Waffle House. I love the Waffle I, I House. I have too. I've, I, I have uh, had a good number of dates at Waffle Houses. Have you now? Yes. Please never share those with us. Usually it's pretty tame. So and and, 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 and people and, go there to fight too. So and the reason that oh, I have indeed. to believe that most of these people are going to the Waffle House afterwards, I can recall a trip that Brother Joe and I took one time to Columbia, South Carolina, to see CWA wrestling. And afterwards, we went directly to the Waffle House where we ran into an injured Josh Magnum. Josh Magnum. Whoa. And Josh Magnum, at one time, at this time, was on the verge of TNA. And actually, I believe that event was CWA versus TNA. If he, I remember correctly. He was on the verge of eating a waffle when we ran into exactly. him. Exactly. One-handed because the other one was in a sling. <laughs> what a talented guy, though. Talented guy. One of the Probably one of the most talented guys from the CSRA. True. Now I kind of want to go and just like the, the, the good lord, what's it called? The one that comes with everything. The all-star special. Just like put all my stuff on the waffle and roll it up like a burrito. I actually just got ill imagining that. Whoa! Look at the power. <laughs> Look like he might have sprained his wrist there. Guys, the match is full of twos. Yeah, it's twos. Told you, that's why the referee has to wear special gloves. 
Well, you know, the question that you have to ask yourself is... He's wearing a pair of gloves. Does that mean he's ambidextrous? Maybe. Or maybe he's going to ride his hog out of here after the match. Maybe, room, room. maybe he just wants the match. Maybe he's got a gig after the match. It's possible. Or maybe he needs gloves, so... Look, he's playing air drums right now. Him. Look, One fork and <laughs> one knife in like each hand as the Waffle House. <laughs> he's got to go be in a tribute band after this. I would venture to say that probably the other reason they need to go to the Waffle House afterwards is, judging from the look of this place, upstairs there's probably a kegger going to happen here pretty soon. A kegger? A kegger. A kegger at the wrestling match. It doesn't get any more exciting than that, folks. No, nope, no. Nope. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like the kind of event that would be put on for, like, Tommy Rich's 50th birthday. Who is that? It's just like a random fan. Like, oh my let me gosh. in, let me in. Where did you find this guy? <laughs> you know what's interesting? Uh, I don't know if it's just grainy footage, but you can't really see anybody on the uh, second tier there. They might have a blocked off. That's scary. Well, it looks like we, uh, we're we having some issues here in the ring. Uh-oh. And Michael J. Fox has just entered the ring. Oh, look at that. Man, this is like uh, this is like another dance part. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Artemis Pyle just got knocked out. That's what you get for uh, cheating. <laughs> the belt is mine! Ha 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 ha! Nice messed his hair up. That's all. You know what they say. <laughs> Cheaters never win and winners never cheat. And Austin Creed is awful, awful hard to beat. I think we're about to get the move. Boom. Bam! That right there is called his own version of scattered, covered, smothered, topped. Captain Country. Well, maybe not Captain. Oh, dropped him like a rock. And that's that, got to be it. That was the cap. He came down on his head. All right. I have the tiger, baby. I have the oh. tiger. There was no way Osaka had enough energy left to keep going after some of those last few hits. No, and we know who won't be getting a free meal at the Waffle House tonight, guys. Poor guy. Well, He's got to shell out 250 for a two-egg plate. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, I think he uh, he might not even have a date to the Waffle House after that loss. Oh, even... wait a minute, some words. That's how Creed does his thing in this ring. Ah, ah, ah. Another great indie match here on GWH TV, Austin Creed and Ryan Chaos. And you know, the wonderful thing is sometimes we give a hard time to current wrestling, but the indie wrestling circuit has a lot of really good stuff and it's always been that way Absolutely. in the Georgias and the Carolinas. You know, uh, speaking of indie, uh, there was uh, when Brother Joe and I first started working for Georgia Wrestling History, we made a trip up to Cornelia, Georgia, Cornelia. for what was then called NWA Anarchy. Yeah. And we went up there to meet some of the other people from uh, Georgia Wrestling History. And the first people that welcomed us through the door was actually Austin Creed, yep. then known as Consequences Creed, and AJ Styles. Yep. Couldn't and, uh, ask for two nicer guys to welcome you into the, the Church of Southern Wrestling. That's right. Les Thatcher was giving a clinic. 
legendary Les Thatcher. We sat and uh, listened uh, as Bobby Simmons, also a mainstay at uh, Georgia Wrestling History and a That's longtime right. referee. Uh, for Georgia Championship Wrestling, actually re- refereed a lot of the matches at the Bell Auditorium right here in Augusta, Georgia. That's right. And uh, he uh, was the first to note that um, nobody that day participating in the matches that night actually wore wrestling boots. How did they get away with that? Tennis shoes and shin covers. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for... What time is it? It's time for the main event! Exactly. Let's go to it. Fans have seen of all the action is in Louisville, Kentucky for a capacity crowd to see this NWA Southern Tag Championship match with Al Green and Phil Hickerson along with their manager Sam Bass. They are the Tag Challengers. Phil Yamamoto, who are the Tag Challengers. You see big Phil Hickerson in the ring right now. Tojo on his right. One of those powerful Tojo Yamamoto headlocks on big Phil Hickerson. Al Green pacing on the outside of the ring. Into the ropes, Tojo goes. Bill Hickerson slams Tojo right on his side of the mat. Tojo says, turn about his fair play, picks up the big man and lets him drop right on his back. Jerry Jarrett giving his partner Tojo some words of encouragement there in his championship match before a capacity crowd in Louisville. Manager Sam Bass saying a few words to Big Al Green. Both wrestlers ready to lock horns and away they go. And just as soon as Phil Hickerson got that arm of Tojo Yamamoto, Tojo broke out of the hold. Phil Hickerson complaining that Tojo Yamamoto used the trunks. Referee has a few words with Tojo. And away we go. Tojo Yamamoto is looking mighty mad tonight. Once that belt, absolutely. The full Nelson on Phil Hickerson by Tojo Yamamoto. Putting the pressure right there on the back of the skull. That has got to hurt. Look at the size of those arms on Phil Hickerson. Outstanding wrestling here in the ring tonight. A lot of muscle in there. Tojo Yamamoto. That's a surprise for Phil Hickerson. I don't know whether that pop picked up on the television camera here or not, but you can hear that thing all over Convention Center here tonight. Jerry Jarrett, Tojo, having a few words. Wrestlers, referee says, come on, let's get going once again. This is one fall, a one-hour time limit of this match for the championship belts. Into the ropes they go. Into the ropes, Tojo goes. Hits Phil Hickerson, drops him one more time. Tojo pulls him and lays a couple of punches into the midsection of Phil Hickerson. Tojo Yamamoto now giving that to famous Jackie Fargo strut around the ring and the fans are going wild over that one there he goes right in the corner sees Jerry Jarrett says no thank you Bill Hickerson kind of bewildered about the whole thing checking in with Al Green trying to figure out I guess what the next move would be and Tojo's waiting for him now, Phil Hickerson has Tojo in a headlock. Tojo spins him out of the ropes. Bill Hickerson giving the famous strut again and gets kicked in the uh, backside by Tojo Yamamoto. Bill Hickerson now is mad. Gives Tojo Yamamoto a few verbal blasts there. Manager Sam Bass calling both of his uh, wrestlers together to give them some instructions. Referee starts that count, says, come on, let's get back into action here. This is a championship match, NWA Southern Tag Championship match. Tojo Yamamoto and Phil Hickerson are the ring right now. Tojo up against the ropes. Phil Hickerson draws back, lets one fly to Tojo. Correct. Let him have it right in the throat. Tojo probably thinking turn about his fair play. Enter Big Al Green, and he is a big man. Tojo Yamamoto let fly the judo chop. To the chest of Big Al Green. It looks like Al Green has a chain. He, I think Al Green has a chain. Yes, he does. Tojo Yamamoto to the side of the head. Now he is choking Tojo. Jerry Jarrett is protesting the referee. Tojo Yamamoto in a lot of trouble right now. That chain wrapped around his neck. Sam Bass calling the referee. 
Referee gets Sam Bass back in the corner. Tojo Yamamoto still being choked quite a bit. You can probably see on your screen Tojo Yamamoto's head turning a bright red. Jerry Jarrett enters the ring. Referee says no dice. Back to the corner. Jerry Jarrett protests at all avail. Now Phil Hickerson letting in with a barrage on Tojo Yamamoto. Takes over from Al Green. Still with that chain wrapped around his neck. The referee has not seen that chain yet. Bill Hickerson applying that pressure to Tojo. Tojo, as I said, is in a lot of trouble. Now, Bill Hickerson passes the chain off to Al Green. Once again, Al Green with a chain wrapped around his fist into the midsection of Tojo Yamamoto. Jerry Jarrett is mad. The referee says you must stay in your corner. This is a championship match. There'll be no interference. Tojo Yamamoto still getting choked by Big Al Green. Tojo trying to get out of it. Karate chops to the midsection of Al Green. Phil Hickerson enters from the back. Unless Tojo Yamamoto have it to the back of the head. Big Al Green continues to whip Tojo Yamamoto with that chain. Brutal punishment being dealt here tonight. Jerry Jarrett in the ring with the wooden shoe of Tojo. The referee says no. Back to the corner. Both wrestlers working on Tojo now. The trade-off has begun. And Phil Hickerson in the ring. Look at the pressure being applied to Tojo's neck. Unbelievable. Tojo desperately trying to get out of that hole with the chain wrapped around his neck. The referee has not seen the chain yet in this championship match tonight here at Convention Center. Sam Bass being told by the referee to sit down in his corner. Bill Hickerson bringing Tojo over to the corner. Tags the big Al Green. Al Green enters the match. Tojo still in a lot of trouble. Receiving a brutal punishment with that chain. Gasping for air. Now... Al Green has the forearm wrapped around Tojo Yamamoto's throat. The referee is trying to determine whether it's a chokehold or not. It's kind of hard to tell on holes like that. Big Al Green reaching into his trunks gets something. I can't tell whether he got that chain or not. Apparently he did not. Tojo Yamamoto receiving a brutal punishment from Al Green tonight. Tojo Yamamoto would like nothing better than to be tagging out the Jerry Jarrett right about now. It is very difficult. It appears. That, oh, what is this? What is this? Jerry Jarrett boiling mad at the referee. And both wrestlers continue to work on Tojo. Bill Hickerson and the red Big Al Green and the black trunks working on Tojo Yamamoto. He still probably had that chain around his neck. By the position of Al Green's hands, it does look that way. Tojo Yamamoto receiving a brutal punishment tonight. The referee trying to break up the wrestlers. Tojo on the ropes trying to inch his way over to Jerry Jarrett. Sam Bass on the ring apron. The referee tells Sam Bass, no, in your corner, no interference. This is the championship match. Both wrestlers now working on Tojo Yamamoto. Al Green is left. Bill Hickerson now in the match. Unbelievable punishment being applied to the throat of Tojo Yamamoto. Tojo Yamamoto, face bright red as you can see on your television screen. Jerry Jarrett just aching to get in this match. Tojo Yamamoto has a long way to go before he tags out. Tojo Yamamoto took a swipe with the eyes of Phil Hickerson, stunning Hickerson. Almost Sam Bass distracts the referee. Al Green in the match, and Al Green is there with that chain again to the head of Tojo Yamamoto and back. Jerry Jarrett, let's fly that wooden shoe on the head of Big Al Green. Jerry Jarrett. Walking Al Green with that shoe. Al Green picks up that chain. He and Phil Hickerson continue to work on Tojo. Once again, the choke hole tonight. The fans are going wild here at Convention Center in Louisville. Tojo Yamamoto in a lot of trouble. Al Green continues to apply the pressure. Tojo with four fingers right to the throat. Stunning Al Green. Tojo trying to work his way over to the corner with Jerry Jarrett. Dying to get into this match. Tojo Yamamoto. Let's fly with a judo chop to Al Green. If Tojo can get over there, he will be in good shape if he can tag out right now. But of course, he has a long way to go. And Al Green is big. And Al Green wrapping something. Looks like that chain again. Let's fly to Tojo Yamamoto. Applying that pressure. Al Green is. Al Green and Phil Hickerson holding the championship belts. Tojo Yamamoto and Jerry trying to get those belts tonight. Tojo continues to let fly with those powerful judo chops to Al Green. Al Green once again grabs on to Tojo, brings him back over to the Al Green, Phil Hickerson corner. The tag is made, enter the ring, Phil Hickerson. Tojo Yamamoto now has someone else to contend with. That is Phil Hickerson. 
Both Al Green and Ferguson say, Jerry Jarrett is mad. Uh, Jerry Jarrett has got something. Jerry Jarrett has got that fist. And I don't know if they've got that chain or not, fans. I can't tell. There's so much excitement going on here at Convention Center tonight. But Jerry Jarrett is letting fly with that fist. Knocks Bill Henderson out of the ring. Jerry Jarrett goes over. But did not tag Tojo, of course. Jerry Jarrett let fly with those fists right to the chin of Phil Henderson. The tag is made. Ten minutes of a last in this match so far tonight in Louisville. Phil Henderson, Tojo Yamamoto in the ring. Tojo, let's fly the barrage of judo chops. Stunning Phil Henderson. Those chops are really hard. Day. Tojo Yamamoto over the corner. He tags. He tags. The referee. Uh-oh, the referee did not see the tag. The referee did not see it. That is the rule. The rule is the referee must see the tag. He was over talking to Sam Bass, telling Sam Bass to get back in that corner. So the referee did not see it. Sam Bass has a belt. Sam Bass has his belt out. Look out. They got Tojo Yamamoto. Oh, that had to hurt. Got Tojo right in the throat. Sam Bass, Al Green had that belt out like that. Tojo Yamamoto. Now, Jerry Jerry. There's a referee. Can you believe that? Do you believe that, fans? Do you believe that? Unbelievable. Referee Tommy Marlowe came in from the outside. Referee, the regular referee. Oh my gosh, Jerry Jarrett and Tojo Yamamoto are declared the winners. Their hands were being held up. Jerry Jarrett, Tojo Yamamoto's head. That was a fight. Wow. What a main event we just saw, guys. And like always, the main event from an entirely great show of matches. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. We actually just got to see Al Green. Now, not, not to be confused with the legendary 60s and 70s R&B and soul singer Al Green. No. Nope. Uh, he teamed up with Phil Hickerson, not to be confused with PGA golfer Phil Mickelson. No. Nope. Or... But they actually dropped the belts here to J E double R Y J A double R E double T, the father of J E double. What? J- J- Jerry Jarrett and Togo. What are you spelling? Yamamoto. Jared, Jared, the Galleria of. Wait. You know what? Let's end this on a good note. Okay. It was a pleasure being. In your living rooms and your computers and your smartphones once again on this marvelous mullet Monday. It's all I know. Yeah. And all I know is we'll see you next week and at the matches. Bye, everybody. Alright, and it is time for the bonus match. Yeah, welcome to Texas. I got a bonus! You got a bonus? I got a bonus. Well, apparently, from what I understand, most of our audience has actually tuned out and gone on to the Waffle House because they did not know a bonus match was coming up. You did a pretty good job advertising that place. I think that's kind of our own fault. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they got pretty rocking hash browns. Right now, with the Sam Houston Coliseum Mid-South Wrestling 1984, I believe this is, we have the Fantastics taking on the Midnight Express, beautiful Bobby Eaton and lover boy Dennis Condry with the Mouth of the South, Jim Cornette. Actually, I take that back. That's Jimmy Hart. And I'm just glad I just had hash browns on the mind. I'm just glad we're taking it back in time. I can't believe I just called Jim Cornette Jimmy Hart. That's what happens when you get hungry. Yeah. Yep. Well, I can understand that. When you go to the Waffle House, you risk a heart attack. 
So oh, yeah, which is funny because you know in the last few years, Cornette is like probably mostly known for like the whole incident at the drive thru. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> That's because they look very Dave Cool. Yeah. You remember? Uh, do you remember that show Out of Control that he did before Full House? Yes. He used to have a. Like, oh, was it the game show on MTV? It was like a talk show on Nickelodeon, I believe. Oh, okay. But he had a mullet then too. Yeah, so. he still has a mullet. It's kind of like you. Yep. Kind of like these guys. And probably like. Everyone in the crowd. Yep. Man, woman, and child alike. Dude out there is like, come on, come on, fight me. Come over here, come at me, bro. Quack, quack, chicken, moo. You know, if, uh, with those kind of moves, if wrestling hadn't worked out for him, Jim Cornette might have found work as the San Diego chicken. Well, I'm sure his, his mom would have hooked him up somehow. That's, that was his also his uh, partner in mixed doubles tennis as well. Yep. I hear they had a uh, an impeccable record on the court. Yep. Now this was back in the days where wrestlers actually wore trunks, and uh, apparently most of them didn't wear cups either. Um, yeah, which, you can kind of maybe tell a little bit. Great to watch these. <laughs> it really didn't matter because they were all definitely wrestlers. Yeah. So, all right, guys, thank you for that insight. <laughs> How many wrestling raiders can you spot? You know, a very uh, interesting fun fact about Dennis Condry. He actually is the man that invented the scaffold match. Yep. Oh, that sounds uh, dangerous. Brother, j- sounds dangerous. He he. he you should have uh, heard what he said. He almost did in his pants on the way up the ladder. Exactly. Ooh. Yep. Yes. Uh, Dennis uh, actually uh, took some time to. Uh, what is with the. Uh, it's just his little pre high five jig. Was Rick, was Rick Flair doing his uh, strut then? Now, Ric Flair's been doing his... He strutted out of the womb, dude. What are you talking about? It's Ric Flair. The woo! He's been wooing all his life. Now, that would be since he came out of the woo! <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, Jim Cornette is a man of, man of many words. You know, a lot of people don't realize that uh, back in the 70s and 80s, not only did... Uh, in some areas in the South, not only did wrestling actually boost the economy as far as entertainment is concerned, it also boosted the economy as far as, far as hair products is concerned, and particularly bleach, which I think until wrestling wasn't really known as an actual hair product. So what you're saying is that the Southern professional wrestlers could have been the forebearers of the hairband image that would come along a little bit later in the decade. Mm, yeah, I wonder how well Or just off, to carry over from the Molly Hatchet years. True. I wonder how well off companies like uh, L'Oreal and Aussie would be if guys like Not as well off. Well, as as a child of the 80s, th- there were also other products. And Bleach weren't... There was this product that was called Sun In, I believe. Mm. And what you did is during the summertime is you sprayed this in your hair and you went out into the sun and it turned your hair blonde. You know, I had a friend's mom that, that put some of that stuff in my hair when I was a kid. Really? How'd that work out for you? I mean, what, I don't even really remember much past the spraying. <laughs> you probably should have called the police then. <laughs> I actually put some sun in uh, in my hair once in high school and it turned white. Like, turned white. like M&M white. <laughs> <Yeah>. Holy <laughs> cow. <laughs> you probably really, really look like George Clooney then. I tell you, I was I was Eminem and George Clooney before. Eminem was Eminem. And oh no, he, it, it, it's it's he's relapsing from the drive-through. <laughs> Let me at him! Let me at him! We're having a glimpse into the future. Exactly. Like Listen, you stupid raff! I'm like an angry dog. But they have to. What do you mean you weren't sure if we were here to wrestle? <laughs> we're in a ring. We got wrestling trunks. What kind of idiot wouldn't think we weren't here to wrestle? 
Okay, no. I don't want fries with that. <laughs> asthma kicking in. I'm running out of breath now. <coughs> oh, man. Jim looks like uh, he's ready to get in there and is tussle. That, is that Walter Matthau over to the left? <laughs> That's a good observation, Brother John. Bad news bears. Look, I see a granny to the left. Yeah! All right, it's back. back for the granny. Oh, man, they're, they're, look at, there's a couple, his grandpa was up there yelling and screaming. Maybe they're together. They, you know what, it's Get funny. They lawn. keep, they keep popping up, and you know what it reminds me of? You know, like when you go to Chuck E. Cheese, and they have that game with the hammer, and they, the little gophers keep popping up. Yes. A whack-a-mole. That's what they, yeah, that's, that's what they keep. A whack-a-mole. Whack-a-mole. <laughs> I actually never knew that game had a name. Wow, oh, they, yeah. really? An official name. Uh, wait a minute, he's got a chair. You know what, you, uh, you, I think you guys missed it, but Cornette actually tried to hand Walter Matthau um, his jacket, and he, he uh, Walter Matthau wouldn't take it. He, he was like, "Carry your own damn jacket." Like freaking out so much, he looks like he's about to have a heart attack. He's a uh, he's a very central point or a focus to this match. Yep. Wrestlers, what are those? I'm looking at this dude in the tie. Look at Bobby Eaton sporting the, uh, the Heather Locklear. <laughs> there you go. You know, a lot of people may not Locks. also realize that um, <laughs> that Corner actually broke into wrestling as as a kid, as a photographer he, at I was the matches. Not aware of that. Um, he actually, and and I want to say that that Jerry Lawler had a similar experience that broke into wrestling by taking pictures. Sometimes you just got to start out the same way as Spider-Man did. Yep. And if you notice, Spider-Man was by the springiness of Jim yes. Cornette, this is well before he blew out two knees from that said scaffolding match you were talking about earlier. So, basically, he has uh, Dennis Condry here in the ring to thank for that. <laughs> yes. Man. I'll tell you what. Uh, did, did you know he had that kind of right? Look at it. I, I do now. Wow. Man. Jim's a tough customer. Remind me not to get a job at a drive through anywhere that Cornette's going to be coming through after a wrestling match for crying out loud. What do you mean you're out of chicken nuggets? Man. And I'll tell you what, uh, Brother John and I actually got the chance to meet beautiful Bobby Eaton when he was here in town back in 2009 at an indie show. Was it Galaxy Pro Wrestling, Brother John? I, I believe so. And for those of you who have seen our episodes, you can you can actually see that. I believe uh, is that episode one. I believe so. That clip episode one. Uh, we actually taped that um, when we were actually uh, we actually recorded or broadcast an episode of our old radio show, which was also here on the Georgia Wrestling History Network from that very location. Con hey, I'll tell you, Conjury and Eaton, two of the nicest guys you'd ever want to meet. Two absolute gentlemen. I always enjoy talking to both of them. I'm not sure if the Rock and Roll Express would agree, but... <laughs> or the Mulkies. Or the Mulkies. So, but... Oh, there's Eaton Jim. and Condry both uh, had nothing but oh, nothing but fine things to say about the monkeys on our occasions talking to them about the monkeys. I have nothing but fine things to say about the monkeys. Yep. The monkeys are just two fine wrestlers. And you know, I'm kind of hoping that in the future that we we have a match that we have to gloss over like this one where we can actually invite the Mulkies to take part in talking about it. So, Mulkies, if you're Mulkies, listening, Bill, Randy, please hit us up. Because um, that way, you know, we could always use two more people rambling over nothing during a wrestling match. Right. Hey, five people without anything to say is much better than three people exactly. without anything yeah. to say. There Bring it on. So. If you've ever wondered what it's like to go to an indie wrestling match with us, wonder no longer because you're hearing it. Exactly. And but you know the interesting part is is while we do this the whole time we don't bother anybody, and we always seem to know what's going on in the match. Just like we know exactly what's going on right now. Lover boy Dennis Condry going for the pin. Nope. He should have hooked the leg, brother John. Should have hooked the leg. 
You know, uh, one of my favorite stories is when we had lover boy Dennis Condry on the show back in 2009. He actually got to rap with another legend, Baby Doll. Baby Doll, that's right. The second time he was on our show. And what did Baby Doll have to say to Dennis Condry about comments that Condry had made? Uh, he, she was a little upset that he had referred to her as a big gal. A big gal. A big gal on the on oh, his first man. time on our show. Steve, do you like big gals? I mean, why not, you know? You got a big heart. Needless to say, needless to say, our guest Condry, who we like to refer to as Commando, Commando Condry. That is that is per his own words. Command, uh, yeah, Commando Condry. Commando, are, as in we. He that, he, that he definitely he definitely backtracked when she called. <laughs> well, I would have to. Yes, yes. We've we've actually hung out with Baby Doll. Speaking of CWA Columbia. At at the Jamil Temple back in the summer of 2007. That's right. And as sweet as she can be in person, we also got to see how despicable she could be around mm. the ring. And that's not a woman that I would want to cross. No. No. Mm-mm. So, Heck no. Especially if you're like Conjury and you go commando. Brother John, I, I couldn't have I couldn't have said it any better than you just articulated there for our guest at home. To, I try not to cross women, so this one definitely uh, sounds like one I should not mess with. You now, you know, for fans of this time period of wrestling, Good move. <laughs> one thing that you guys definitely know is that that this was probably a, a great feud for that time period, the Fantastics and the Midnight Express. Now. Oh, yeah. Just to show you the talent in in this ring, think about how many great feuds over the years that the Midnight Express alone had with some great tag teams. Oh, the the Rock and Roll Express, the Wild Eyed Southern Boys, the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors, they took on anyone and everyone. And at one point in time, Aha. there was even a Midnight Express versus a Midnight Express view going on. And that's interesting, Brother John, because one version of the Midnight Express was uh, Beautiful Bobby Eaton, which we see here in the ring, along with Sweet Stan Lane, managed by Jim Cornette, who we see on the outside, against the other version of the Midnight Express, which was Dennis Condry and Randy Rose, managed by, you know him as Paul Heyman, Paul E. Dangerously. Paul E. Dangerously, with the giant phone, and what else did he have? A um, ponytail mullet. Exactly. I think I actually know who you're talking about. That's good. Yeah. These days, said Paul E. Dangerously, is said manager of Mr. Two Move. Uh, Brock Lesnar. That's right. I wonder if Brock Lesnar would uh, reform a version of the Midnight Express. Let's hope not. Yeah. He'd probably like, try to change his name and be legend. <laughs> the, the Lex Express, maybe? Midnight Locomotive Experience. Isn't that a Jethro Tull song? It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> they could come out to that. Well, that's Locomotive Breath. So, yeah, he probably has that, too. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to find out. No, I, I don't even know what's going on now. Who's who? So, what's happening? You know, we're all just in the crowd this now. This is a vintage footage. Back back in this time period... Now we're moshing. <laughs> back in this time period, tag teams and tag team divisions and tag team wrestling stood up toe-to-toe with with singles competition. Unlike now, it's almost like the last few years of tag team wrestling is just kind of like, oh, let's put some tag teams together and yada yada throw them out. <laughs> Now, I am feeling with the New Day that we could possibly and are possibly seeing a resurgence in the tag team ranks. Yes, yes. If, uh, but but it, it all depends on, on what they decide to do. I mean, you've had these, uh, what, what were they called? The expansion, the expulsion, those two guys that are like the bad, the bad, uh, the, ascent, the, the ascension. Yeah, those, 
those guys. They were from the Wastelands. Yes, the and Wastelands. Isn't that where uh, Mad Max was from? I think That's so. That's a very metal sounding so, tag team. And they were very metal looking. Yeah, unfortunately they weren't very metal fighting. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but then you have um, you have the, 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 the two the two 30s guys. The Vaud like villains. The Vaud villains. Two, one of my favorite tag teams. Oh, yeah. Um, that I'd like to see more of. Um, so have the Le- Wyatt family, if they were an actual tag team. And you still have the legendary Dudley boys. Well, possibly. Because there was a question on whether they did actually say goodbye last night. I don't think so. But... I, I do believe that we have a, a conclusion to this. Look, match. that guy's holding his kid up. That's awesome. He was already on the front row. Now he's just blocking everyone else's view. <laughs> and of course, if you guys expected otherwise, the victors in this match, the Fantastic, Fantastics. Whoa! Uh, look, it's a granny, and I think that's the most fantastic thing of all. Is that a still Getty? It would be fantastic. If and there he call. goes again. <laughs> that's a that's a fantastic. I never get what I want. I want. I want. I want. That's a fantastic fit that Jimmy's throwing. I want chicken McNuggets. <laughs> that guy looks like a uh, Harley Race out there on the outside I of the ring. Tacos. How good can you feel holding the belt up after you lose? <laughs> 